It's neuroanesthesia and we will discuss anesthesia in patients with Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is a second most common neurodegenerative disease after Alzheimer's disease and classically considered a movement disorder secondary to degeneration of dopaminergic neurons in the basal ganglia and neurostriatal system. It is recognized that Parkinson's disease is a multi-system neurodegenerative process. It affects about 1 million Americans and by statistics and 40% uh, of the Parkinson's disease patients are living in long-term care facilities and mortality is almost twice the expected rate. Most cases of Parkinson's disease uh, are idiopathic if we are talking about causes and it, it, environmental factors including exposure to volatile anesthetics and genetic predisposition have been implicated. Thus, with the first degree relatives uh, with Parkinson's disease have a relative risk of developing uh, Parkinson's disease and relative risk is 2.9. The common features of, of the disease is neural loss and if you are going to the pathophysiology, the common uh, affection of the disease is neural, neuronal loss and gliosis of the substantia nigra part compacta. So 70% of the dopamine producing cells in the striatum have degenerated leading to a relative imbalance between the inhibitory properties of the dopamine and the excitatory properties of the acetylcholine. Acetylcholine. Within the striatum within the striatum. Okay, however, pathology extends beyond the striatum and dopamine. The pathologic hallmark of Parkinson's disease is a Lewy bodies, Lewy bodies and intracellular aggregate of abnormal protein, including alpha synuclein, which is present nearly in all forms of Parkinson's disease. This alpha synuclein pathology and concomitant de neurodegeneration are seen in numerous areas of the central and peripher peripheral nervous system, including noradrenergic, serotonergic, and cholinergic neurons of the brain stem and in the amygdala, cingulate uh, gyrus, and neocortex. What are the cl clinical uh, cardinal features of Parkinson's disease? They include a resting tremor, a resting and rhythmic tremor, muscular rigidity, bradykinesia. These are often associated with a lack of spontaneous movement, a masked faces, cagwell rigidity and monotonous voice, stupid posture, and a shuffling gait leading to postural instability and impaired locomotion widespread neurodegeneration. Non-motor features of the disease represent important sources of disability and long-standing uh, Parkinson's disease are often the predominant problem. Autonomic uh, dysfunction. Autonomic dysfunction like postural hypotension, daytime sleepiness, depression, anxiety, hallucinations, and psychosis are common. Dementia, of course, in a degenerative disorders, is a almost universal in patients with long-standing uh, Parkinson's disease. How about treatment? There is no cure for Parkinson's disease. Therapy has focused almost exclusive, exclusively on the motor aspects of the disease. Given that the main deficit in Parkinson's disease is inadequate dopamine in the basal ganglia, 
Pharmacologic therapy aims to increase the activity of dopamine relative to acetylcholine in this region. This is typically accomplished with dopamine receptor agonists such as bromcryptine and, and pergolid. Bromcryptine and pergolid. Or with the levodopa or L-dopa, also call it, it is a prodrug that undergoes decarboxylation in both the peripheral and central nervous system to produce dopamine, a final product. Peripheral conversion of L-dopa or dopamine to dopamine produces side effects such as nausea, vomiting, hemodynamic instability, so combined treatment with carbidopa, another drug which uh, is inhibitor of uh, decarboxylase that does not cross the blood brain barrier and uh, save L dopa as a form to passing the central nervous system. L dopa is the most potent, best tolerated symptomatic therapy and may even slow disease progression. But dopamine agonists are often first line therapy because L dopa is associated with a high incidence of dyskinesias. Dopamine agonists have their own problems like leg edema, hallucinations, somnolence, and development of impulse uh, control disorders such as binge in eating or compulsive gambling. Benzotropine, another drug, which is anticholinergic agent, block uh, cholinergic transmission, and amantadine, another one, which is antiviral antiviral and uh, alters the uptake and the release of dopamine as at presynaptic sites. Because monamine oxidase or MAO inhibitors is a major enzyme involved in oxidative metabolism of dopamine in the striatum, type B MAO inhibitors such as selegiline should be avoided. When motor complications become dissembling and medical therapy fails, deep brain stimulation, deep brain stimulation becomes uh, re recommended and involves surgical placement of electrodes in the subsalamic nucleus and other brain regions and stimulated high frequencies. And last options, uh, less of the option represent uh, transplantation of fetal midbrain or stem cells into uh, human Parkinson's disease patients. It is another exciting alternative and the cells of uh, the cell function and uh, survive for up to 14 years. And finally, we get a point which we are trying to reach. It's uh, anesthesia management, perioperative management of the patient. So perioperative management of the patient with Parkinson's disease is challenging and attention should be directed toward maintenance of perioperative drug therapy, potential adverse drug interactions and the uh, physiologic perturbances associated with the disease. It is also important to recognize that emotional stress. Emotional stress, which is unavoidable and difficult to address in the perioperative period, can also exacerbate Parkinson's disease. One major problem is that the half life of levodopa is short, about 60 to 90 minutes, about uh, around uh, one hour, and therefore even brief interruptions in the drug therapy are undesirable and can result in an acute exacerbation of the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. The development of neuroleptic malignant uh, syndrome, a potential fatal disorder that uh, presents as hyperthermia, Akinesia, altered consciousness, muscle rigidity, and autonomic dysfunction, and consequently interruption interruption of uh, anti Parkinson's drug therapy should L be as brief as possible. And about a malignant uh, neuroleptic malignant syndrome should be recognized, and the main components uh, could be 
succinylcholine and volatile anesthetics, which are the main, which can declare this disease. So patients with Parkinson's disease often have delayed gastric emptying also should pay attention every of the doctor. Patient uh, with Parkinson's disease can produce a restrictive lung disease secondary to chest wall rigidity. But pulmonary function tests often reveal an obstructive pattern. Upper airway of abnormalities also occur and involuntary movements of the glottis of the glottis uh, and supraglottic structures cause intermittent airway obstruction. Upper airway obstruction with laryngospasm and respiratory arrest are doc documented in as complications of Parkinson's disease and may occur outside the setting of anesthesia and surgery. Perhaps no uh, surprisingly, therefore, laryngospasm has been reported postoperatively in awake patients hours after surgery in awake state stage so directly visualization of the larynx during such episodes reveal complete opposition of the vocal cords requiring succinylcholine for relief and intubation of the patient patients are predisposed to aspiration and because they often have severe but asymptomatic dysphagia and dysmotility, which combined with upper airway uh, abnormalities present an especially troublesome situation. In fact, pulmonary aspiration is a frequent cause of death among patients with Parkinson's disease. Pay attention for this aspiration of possible aspiration as such, administration of antacids and prokinetics should be considered. Metoclopramid, very important about this metoclopramid, as it must be avoided, it is a dopamine antagonist. In contrast, uh, prokinetic drugs like uh, cisapride or domperidone have no effect on central dopaminergic balance and are reasonable alternatives. Nervous system dysfunction is also common. Autonomic insufficiency affects the ability of Parkinson's patients to respond to the hypovolemia and vasodilation, sometimes associated with anesthesia and surgery. Orthostatic hypotension, thermal regulatory or general genital urethral dysfunction suggest, uh, suggests pre-existing autonomic insufficiency and should heighten awareness of the potential, potential for perioperative hemodynamic instability and altered response to the vasopressors such as norepinephrine also known as noradrenaline you should uh, charge a syringe with noradrenaline for these patients to be protected and of course any of the uh, hypovolemic shock could occur complications such as anxiety confusion and even frank psychosis such uh, such psychosis occur more frequently in patients with Parkinson's disease than the general population and can be especially problematic in the perioperative period. And now the main part which represent anesthetics and many particularities of these drugs. Let's start with volatile anesthetics that can alter dopam dopaminergic balance in the brain but uh, whether they exacerbate Parkinson's disease is unknown. In fact, surgery has been performed successfully under general anesthesia with a volatile agents suggesting activity in dopaminergic circuits are reasonable, uh, reasonably well maintained. Another one is propofol, produces both uh, dyskinesia and ablation of arresting tremor. It suggests that it has both excitatory and inhibitory effects of, of in this uh, patient population, but it also has used it successfully to sedate Parkinson, uh, Parkinson's patients. Dexmedetomidine uh, also appears to be safe and when used for deep brain lead implantation and stimulations has the uh, advantage of not interfering with motor symptoms. 
ketamine should be used cautiously if uh, if if at all because uh, of potential interaction with levodopa and its sim uh, its uh, sympathomimetic properties butyrophenones like droperidol antipsychotics and phenocyanins which block dopamine dopamine receptors and exacerbate uh, parkinson's disease and should be avoid avoid any do uh, blocking effects of of the dopamine on the citron uh, it's a serotonin receptor antagonist and it is safe for using it prevent uh, prevent emesis in these patients and can be used successfully to treat the psychosis of chronic levodopa therapy and the last one is meperidine that should be avoided in a patient taking MAO inhibitors like selegiline however because of the potential for the development of stupor rigidity agitation and hyperthermia responses uh, to Depo uh, depolarizing as well as non depolarizing muscle relaxants are thought to be normal in a uh, patient. Didn't add, add it in this slide. So, once again, it's a neurodegenerative uh, disorder, a second most common. It affects 1 million of Americans. It affects substantia nigra of parts compacta and striatum, Lew bodies with in intracellular aggregation and the position of abnormal protein, cardinal signs, resting tremor, muscle rigidity, bradykinesia, dysphagia, cogol rigidity, and shuffling gait, as well as autonomic dysfunction, which is important for uh, anesthesia, as can give you even a hypotensive shock. Treatment you give drugs agonists of dopamine receptor or, or even a dopamine prodrug. Uh, carbidopa that is a decarboxylase inhibitor for peripheral inhibition of the conversion anticholinergic like benzotropine which helps with uh, diminishing acetylcholine effect amantadine preventing release selegiline deep brain stimulation as a last resort and transplantation of fetal midbrain or stem cells into a uh, human with parkinson's disease Operative management uh, give anti secretory uh, drugs, uh, diminish stress for patient, and uh, delay de from delay gastric empty do not give anything per oral to the patient for 12 hours. Be careful with, uh, with lungs as there is obstructive pattern of restrictive lung disease. Avoid many drugs that interact with dopamine and you can give uh, prokinetics like cisapride and domperidone. For anesthesia, you can use volatile anesthetics, propofol, and uh, any of the muscle relaxants like depolarizing or non-depolarizing. Thank you very much for your attention. If you like this lecture, you can subscribe and follow this channel. Thank you very much.